Hi there, my name's Wayne Metter, and welcome back to another awesome episode here on A World for Change TV. Uh, again, my name's Wayne Metter. You're watching A World for Change TV. This is a special episode because uh, we are broadcasting a live event uh, located in Salt Lake City, Utah area, and it's for Burton Lumber. Burton Lumber is a family owned and operated business. Uh, they've been around for I think going on going on now 100 years are very close to that. Uh, and Dennis Deuce is on the ground. He has a couple of cameras set up, and we're broadcasting this live, quote unquote, flip the switch event. Now this is is an event where now that they've installed solar on three of their locations, uh, they are now promoting uh, their use of alternative energy. Uh, certainly, so that the uh, residents there who buy from them know about it and can support them with their their money. Uh, but Dennis, Dennis is uh, uh, there on site. Dennis, I'd like to hear from you. Uh, tell us what's going on and what we can expect from this event uh, this afternoon. All right. Well, uh, we're back. We're about an hour away from Linden. We're in Layton, Utah, north of Salt Lake City by about 30 minutes. And um, right now, all of the dignitaries are outside up on the roof. They're taking a look at the... Uh, at the system that's up there, let me show you some uh, video footage of the system. Hold on. Multitasking here, that's what happens. Yeah, sure, that's fine. So as you're getting that video up, uh, we were able to go and take a look at the system today live uh, uh, live right on air. And, um, yeah. you know, it, it, that was exciting for, for me. I think that was a first it, the, to the best of my knowledge, that's the first time somebody has gone up in a man lift live on a hangout on air. Um, it's definitely the first time they've gone up on a man lift live on a hangout on air to show off a solar system. So we at least made one first here on uh, A World for Change TV with the Burton Lumber event we got going on today. Yeah, well, I think it's exciting, at least for me, uh, to be a part of this and to really be able to help promote small businesses who are you know, in the trenches every day, and they are promoting sustainability. We've got people who are investing their dollars um, and their small business money into a sustainable future, and uh, they are setting their business up to last uh, for another hundred years or more. And um, it, it's this dance that we seem to to notice. Uh, from time to time between the big box stores and the small businesses that are growing and that are edging um, or gaining more and more of the market share. But part of that is because us, you know, as consumers are able to see and support now these local small businesses who are taking these strides and um, who are making the right choices, you know, with their investment uh, uh, and, and with their, their business. So, uh, but this is some incredible footage you can see. The forklifts moving, the solar panels, the, the road, the cars driving by. Um, wow. <laughs> yeah, this, this is cool footage. I got to say, I, I, have, I was the one that took all the raw footage and edited it into what you're seeing right now over the weekend, and I need myself a drone now. I'm just saying. I really need one. This is too cool. <laughs> yeah, that, that, it, it really is. Uh, so... Today, then, we're going to get a chance then to talk uh, after the flip the switch. Uh, we'll get a chance to talk with Jeff Burton, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, so after the flip the switch this afternoon, we're going to be coming back in here and we're going to be setting up for a roundtable discussion. We'll have Jeff Burton and uh, you know some of the other um, members of the panel that are speaking today. Uh, we've got a Dr. Laura. I can't remember her last name. Um, but she's with the Governor's uh, Office of Energy Development, OED. Um, we've got Norm from Utah Solar Energy Association. We've got people here from Rocky Mountain Power. We've got people here from uh, Burton Lumber, of course, um, and uh, Hunt Electric, who did the installation. So all of them will be speaking to us. Then we'll go out and, and do the live um, Flip the Switch event. And then we're going to come back in here and have a roundtable discussion. So please post your questions if you're watching this right now. Anything you want to ask, if there's a particular person you want to ask it to, let us know in the chat. We will be taking those questions. We will be 
engaging with the panel after in a uh, roundtable, expecting that to take 15 to 30 minutes of roundtable discussion after the uh, flip the switch actually happens. Yeah, very good. You know, I was uh, uh, quite interested when they were going through this morning at the, the other event, uh, I was very interested to hear what the speakers had to say. Um, but could you give us just a brief understanding of the position of the uh, Utah Solar Association? The, there was an individual there speaking on behalf of the association in Utah. Uh, what is the position of that association? Do you know any of that information, Dennis? <laughs> well, I know quite a bit because I used to actually sit on the board of okay. Utah. Um, a few years ago, I was in charge of, uh, believe it or not, marketing um, for the association. That comes as a surprise to people. But uh, yeah, um, that association, its, its goal and its mission is to broaden uh, solar within the state of Utah. Just get it more adopted, um, kind of make, make noise. So this event is exactly the kinds of thing, kind of thing that Utsia wants to see happening. Um, you know, if, if people are installing systems and they make noise about the systems they're installing, that helps more people to join in. And so UCSS goal is to help create that um, engagement around solar as a truly alternative form of generating electricity. Okay. All right. Well, that's interesting. Um, you know, and, and I'm going to throw this out there. I live in Alabama. We don't have such a great system when it comes to uh, working with the power company. I know there was a power utility that was you know, there uh, earlier this morning at the event and probably back again to speak today. So um, help me as a consumer understand the value of that uh, living in a, in, a, in a location like, um, like where you're at there at Salt Lake City. Uh, help me to understand that because I really would like to, to wrap my head around it. Yeah, it's been an interesting thing. You know, when I was on the board of uh, the Utah Solar Energy Association, we were spending a lot of time working with Rocky Mountain Power, and they were very active in um, negotiating the terms of this contract that they spoke about. So far, they've given away over a half a million dollars in uh, seed money to get solar systems installed on small businesses. It's just a fantastic program that they've got. Um, and, uh, you know, it's really valuable to the community um, because it, it helps the small businesses to be able to afford that upfront investment that's needed and to get the traction so that they can start to save the money. I mean, the reality is solar on a small business is good for the bottom line all day, every day. But that upfront investment, you know, small businesses are often, capital isn't something they have huge amounts of it sitting around. And so it's, do I invest in this or do I invest in that? Well, what Rocky Mountain Power has done has made it possible for these small businesses to invest in this and that. Um, it's a great system they've got going on. Love to have more questions from you guys about that because the specific details. I wasn't part of that negotiation uh, when it happened two years ago, but the specific details would be fun to maybe get into that. So if you've got more questions about Rocky Mountain Power and what they're doing in Utah to support the solar movement, um, and bring those up in the comments. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I have not mentioned it in this broadcast, but if you're watching us live, this is uh, a World for Change TV. My name's Wayne Metter. I'm talking with Dennis Deuce, and he is at Burton Lumber in the Salt Lake City, Utah region at one of their locations, and they're getting ready to quote unquote flip the switch to sustainable, uh, good alternative energy source uh, there, and they've installed a lot of solar panels on the roof. At that location, it'll be the third location. Burton Lumber has installed solar panels on. Um, now, if you're in the audience and you have some questions to any one of the guests who will be speaking at the podium here uh, in just a few minutes, I would highly recommend that you uh, put that in the comment section below. Ask us uh, any questions that you want us to address the individual with. Um, and, and here's one from me. 
uh, I'm going to probably ask this question because, you know, I find that any time there's a handout of sorts, maybe the government might hand out money to me, there must be some stipulation attached to it in return. My thought is, well, what kind of stipulation is attached to the funding coming from Rocky Mountain Power? Uh, maybe there isn't anything, but that's my nature is to question everything. And uh, I don't think that there's, that's a problem or that should be something that we are concerned about. As consumers, we really need to know the answer. And uh, that's part of the beauty of an event like this is because Burton Lumber can now be transparent with the consumers and we can start to work together and collaborate and move forward as a society. So uh, very, very excited about that. Uh, Dennis, I'm going to get ready to come back to you. And uh, how soon do you suspect that we will be talking or listening to the speakers in front of the podium? Uh, looks like you might have, uh, you might be muted, um, but I'm going to come back to you. So it looks like Dennis is still trying to get some things figured out there. Uh, I, I know that he's working with the folks there at Burton Lumber to try to, to bring this event together and try to broadcast an event that really isn't set up to be broadcast uh, on a live, a live channel, so to speak. Um, and we're, we are doing our best to pull the individuals together there that's, uh, that's needed to make this happen. Uh, if you are in the audience, please comment using the hashtag AW4CLive, uh, and we will get to your comments as best as possible. But again, we, I want to remind you that we have some very unique individuals that are coming up uh, and will be speaking here at this event. And the cool thing about it is after we get done flipping the switch, we'll have an opportunity, the audience members, you guys, will have an opportunity to ask uh, these representatives questions. Uh, we will be having a roundtable discussion so please uh, in the comment section below use the hashtag AW4C live and we will try to ask, ask these questions and get your questions answered. Go ahead Dennis. All right we are re ready to go live here so um, I'm gonna switch the mic over to the main mic and let Jeff take it away from here. All right. Well, thank you very much, uh, those that have come, our dignitaries. We appreciate your your efforts in uh, in supporting this. Uh, Burton Lumber is grateful, uh, both the community of Leighton and our support here. Uh, let me kind of outline the agenda that we've got. Uh, we'll hear first from uh, the contractor that did the work on on our uh, few projects we've had. Brock Thane will speak to us, who's the energy manager for Hunt Electric. Uh, we'll then hear from Norm, Har Norm Harrison, who is one of the founders of the Utah Solar Energy Association. We'll then hear from distinguished mayor Bob Stevenson of Layton City. And our concluding speaker then will be Dr. Laura Nelson, who is the appointed on the Governor's Advisory Board for the Energy Council. And we'll go to that point. Thank you. All right, thanks, Jeff, and thank you for the opportunity to be here. We appreciate working with you on the past three projects and looking forward to working with you on the next couple projects as well. So a little, little bit of facts on the, on the project here. There's 308 PV modules installed, um, totaling 77 kW. Total installations is um, 788 kW, and just like we tell all of our customers is, is you need to try to reduce before you produce. So as you as you tour the facility, they've done, uh, Burnt Lumber's done, done a ton of things, helps their impact on net zero, um, on their goal of net zero. So some of the things that they've done is lighting retrofits, they're looking at their HVAC systems, they they take the scrap wood and they use the finger joiners to put the, put the wood together and make you know fuller pieces of wood. Um, with that, some of the statistics is they've been able to lower their carbon footprint by 855,000 pounds of coal being burnt per year off of all of the systems. So essentially 855,000 
pounds that normally would be burnt isn't being burnt because of the these solar arrays that they've put in place. Also, because of their um, solar arrays, they've been able to decrease the capacity on the existing infrastructure and therefore bring down the price of the solar for or the utility costs for others out in the community. Um, it allows Burton Lumber to reduce their overheads by tying down utility rates um, over 25 years and they can are no longer dependent on market fluctuations. So with that being said, the, other, the last thing is, is it's not fossil fuel dependent, so they are protecting their resources. They're not destroying the ecosystem with uh, solar PV installations. So with that, um, I'll turn it over to Norm. Thank you. Thanks. I'm Norm Harrison. I'm here representing the Utah Solar Energy Association. Glad for the opportunity to be here and speak for just a couple of minutes. Um, back um, about a decade ago, four companies started the Utah Solar Association, but since that time, there is about a hundred companies, a little over a hundred companies here in the state of Utah in the renewable energy space now, which is pretty amazing, employing over a thousand uh, Utahns in this arena. Um, solar energy has uh, come leaps and bounds. In fact, it just had its 60th birthday last year. Uh, the original solar panels were built uh, back in the mid-50s by some engineers for Bell Laboratories. Um, since then, we've all seen our little solar calculators, solar about that big. I remember my first solar calculator I bought cost me about 400 bucks, you know, and uh, that was back when I was in college, and now we buy solar panels that are um, hundreds of times more efficient than that, and, and they cost, you know, about 200 bucks, so it's come down a lot. Um, there's over... Uh, um, 100 companies again here in Utah employing lots of people in this space. At this point I'd like to commend Burton Lumber for, for doing these uh, uh, solar arrays on their buildings. What a progressive great uh, show to the community, kind of pioneering effort uh, as we move forward into the renewable energy space. Electric for their great job. Um, they've done a great job installing these systems. Um, solar will probably be uh, not the answer to the energy needs going forward for the nation, but will be a bigger piece of the puzzle providing and contributing to the overall energy needs of our nation. Um, great tax incentives and rebates available for businesses like Burton to do this and to help uh, with the upfront cost and also residential homeowners. And i just happy to be here and, and be a part of this great, uh, great day with uh, Burton Lumber. Thanks. Hi, I'm uh, Bob Stevenson, Leighton City Mayor. And we are uh, here in Leighton very, very grateful to what uh, Burton has done as far as taking a step forward in our community. One of the things that we face all across the Wasatch Front are the the growth issue that's going to take place. I believe that the statistics are telling us that in the next uh, 20 years the growth that will take place here will pretty well double the size of what we are. And with that there's going to become more and more challenges dealing with energy with what we have to do. Uh, when I look at energy, I not only look at uh, power, but we also have water, we have fuel. All these things go into the infrastructure that we need here in our community to be able to thrive and to continue to grow. Leighton City prides itself in being a very progressive city, and to have Burton come in and be able to do this basically you know, sets an example of what other businesses should do, and I know that they will be very open to share the, the successes that they have with this. Uh, we believe here in our community that if there's opportunities for whether it be commercial or residential to be able to uh, expand and to come with new ideas, we want to do it. And again, we're grateful for Burton for all that they've done here in our community and we look forward to working with them and hopefully many other people. Hey, thank you again from Leighton City. Appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you.
Well, uh, it's uh, tough to follow so many great comments. Um, I'm Laura Nelson, and I am the Executive Director of the Governor's Office of Energy Development, and I do chair uh, the Energy Advisory Council for the Governor. And we recognize the importance of our partnerships with mayors, with businesses, with contractors in meeting the energy objectives of the state. As the mayor mentioned, we are set to double uh, in our population in the next 20 to 30 years. And as we double that population, there will be impacts on our energy. There's going to be impacts on water. Um, there's going to be impacts just on congestion. So we are looking very progressively at how we address that growth and we continue to have a sustainable footprint. And at the Office of Energy Development, our charge really is to execute on the governor's 10-year strategic energy plan, which has a strong component for energy efficiency and conservation, which includes uh, deployment of renewable resources like Burton Lumber has done here. And Jeff, Burton is to be commended for their extraordinary efforts, vision, and leadership around deploying distributed generation. I think with the two deployments that we've been honored um, to participate in here today, that Burton is about three quarters of a megawatt of capacity, which is significant. I think you're probably the largest private owner of distributed generation in the state. And when we look at Utah, sixth sunniest state, we should have more distributed resources. And I do hope, and I follow the mayor's comments in saying, I hope that other business leaders will look at the example that you've laid here, and they'll say, we can do that. It makes environmental sense and it makes economic sense. A return on an investment of the scale that you've made, um, I think uh, two and a half million between all of your facilities, maybe a little larger in uh, five years, is is a unique opportunity. And you have an installation that is going to last you for 25 or more years, helping to offset future growth or increases in energy costs. So. I think that as we plan and we look to our future and how we manage our footprint as a population along the Wasatch Front and even into our rural communities, that the vision and the leadership that's provided by Hunt Electric in deploying these uh, technologies in Burton Lumber in accepting uh, the opportunity as well as the challenge uh, to lead by example and the mayor and our communities, I think that we can see greater replication of these types of events. So on behalf of the Governor's Office of Energy Development and, and the Governor's Office, I just want to say thank you all uh, for being our partners, for participating with us and being strong community leaders. We hope that you will take advantage of the incentives that do exist today uh, that are administered through our office. We think that there's a role for those incentives today, but as the price of solar comes down through deployment uh, in projects like this, that we'll see the cost come down and, and no longer we'll need uh, to provide incentives. But we recognize uh, the benefits that you can achieve by having those incentives available and want to commend, again, the great community engagement and leadership that you've all shown. So thank you so much. Well, thank you once again for coming and supporting the effort that, uh, that this, is, this has been. Uh, we're grateful for that. Uh, we'll uh, we'll adjourn this out to turning on some power or saving some power. I guess is what we'll do here. So we'll flip that switch. And thanks again. Appreciate it. Okay, the round table. I've just been informed that uh, in about thirty minutes or so. Okay. We're going to go into a roundtable discussion, talk about solar. We'll be taking live questions from the YouTube audience. Is this being heard right now? Are you, oh, yeah. are you, okay. You're being, this is what you're saying is being heard right now, then. I believe okay. so. I'd have to ask Wayne for sure. Okay. Well, we would like some interjection then to come back from the, the YouTube and those that are watching it right now uh, to have this roundtable for about a half hour. So that would be great. That's time to go. Okay. <laughs>
and, and kind of follow the follow the crowd, so to speak. Yes. So while we're uh, starting to head out there, I just want to point out the way. I mean, this is the other the the latent location, and I just want to point out how beautiful this is for a construction-based business. These guys do a great job of keeping this place clean and professional, um, you know. And uh, I, I just want to point them out, point that out because it's impressive to me. Having been in the trades previously, um, this is not your normal uh, materials and tool location. So, Yeah, well, just the fact that there's a, a, a moose head or an elk head on, on the wall behind you is, is <laughs> something something to be said. So, uh, But, you know, it, it is very exciting to see this kind of thing happening, and I'm thankful that you're out there. We do have a couple of questions coming in from the audience. And, again, if you are an audience member and you're watching and you have some questions uh, for the individuals there at Burton Lumber, my suggestion is that you would get this into the comment section. This is your opportunity to ask Jeff Burton. Uh, we have the city mayor. He may or may not be back at the round table. Uh, Dr. Laura Nelson from the Energy Council or the Governor's Advisory Board uh, at the Energy Council there uh, and some Hunt Electric um, uh, representatives as well. So I really would like you, the audience members, to get in the comments and ask questions. Uh, Dennis, back to you. No, absolutely. That that's what we want. Let's get some engagement. Show these guys, uh, you know, a little bit of YouTube and Google Plus love. Let them know that we're, you know, we're supportive of what they're doing here in Utah, and uh, you know, just learn a little yeah. bit from what they're doing as well. I think there's some great things that can be learned from Jeff and the stuff that he's doing here uh, at Burton Lumber. And so let's let's take advantage of this opportunity to you know, pick the brains of some really brilliant people. Yeah, I, I, uh, I concur and second that motion. So I, I really do hope, again, that the audience members jump in. Uh, looks like Double Dog Farms, uh, his name is Eric, is in the, the audience. He's asking some questions. Um, uh, Avery is also making a comment. Avery says, more businesses should be proactive with conserving energy or energy conservation. And I couldn't agree more. Oh, yeah. No, that is a dead-on comment, and we really appreciate that, Avery. Thank you. But, you know, it's the point that uh, uh, the representative for Hunt Electric was making, uh, that they encourage people to conserve, you know, before they install a large system like this, cut back their overall usage. And, um, you know, that's something that I'm guessing, I'm suggesting they probably have done a very good job at, because of how clean and neat and tidy and organized they are as an organization, and for me, uh, that goes to show that they're you know dotting their I's and crossing their T's, and they're looking for um, a, a way to grow and a way to move forward. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, you know, it's really amazing. They actually use every piece of sawdust in all of their mills statewide to produce uh, wood pellets for you know the burning stoves. And uh, all of their um, ends are all finger grooved back together, which just creates a, uh, you know, a, a massive reduction in the amount of um, wood used in their trusses and those kinds of things. It's the waste, you know, little tails and things like that. I mean, man, I was in the trades before, and on a framing job, you know, you could have two pickup truck loads worth of wood tails thrown away. Well, these guys are using those in making trusses um, by using a finger joiner, and, and that's just, you know, this, this is not something that they take lightly. This is really at the core and the heart of who they are and how they run this operation. Well, that's something that we're starting to see as an organization at, at A World for Change. You know, we interview a lot of people, um, not only individuals, but other small businesses and medium-sized businesses that are... Uh, that have the edge on the marketplace, I guess, in, in being sustainable and being green and, and having zero waste, reducing their carbon emissions, etc. And, you know, I got to say, uh, Burton Lumber is, the, you know, they ain't your mom and pop uh, type of shop. Uh, they're, they're growing. They're a little bit bigger than that. They, they do all of their own work or much of their own work when it comes to fabricating um, for their custom orders. And... Uh, and they're able to use alternative energy in the process. So 
uh, I'm just thankful World for Change has the opportunity to be there with you in person and to share this with the audience live. Yeah. Well, we're heading over for the actual flip the switch. So in a second here, I'm going to set the camera up, uh, come off camera, and uh, get a good shot of the switch itself. Okay. That sounds great. Um, and in, in the meantime, I think when we get uh, back to the roundtable after flipping the switch, we'll have a chance to answer more questions. So, uh, Dennis, as soon as we're ready, and you have a set up. I'm having a difficult time getting the camera, so there you go. Okay. Yellow pole. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we'd like you to move that yellow pole there if you could. It's in the way of the shot. All right. So let's uh, hand on the switch. Make sure you can see that red part. You know what it is. Stop that because it's beautiful. Look at the camera. Right. One, two, three. Woo! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's how many kilowatts per hour? 77 kilowatts. 77 kilowatts just went live. That's awesome. Well, we're going to run back inside for this roundtable discussion. I believe they've set up a table for us in there. So uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing what uh, what more we can learn from these you know, forward-thinking people. It's really great to have people like this in our community here in Utah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's one energetic mayor they have there in Utah, in, in Layton. Yeah. <laughs> we're... we're we're doing our best to bring you, the audience, a, an, an incredible experience. I guess we really want to give you an experience that will allow you to feel like you're on the ground, feel like you're there in person. Dennis, we're watching you walk back through the store. Uh, they have a really neat store uh, in Layton, Utah. It's a suburb of Salt Lake City. And this is the second Flip the Switch event that we've done today. So I'm going to come uh, bring the camera back to me and let you set up there to handle our roundtable discussion. Um, and, and for the audience members who are just now joining us, uh, again, my name is Wayne Metter. This is a World for Change TV. You're watching uh, a special broadcast, live broadcast, uh, based out of Burton Lumber, uh, one of Burton Lumber's locations in a suburb of Salt Lake City. Uh, we are just got done watching them flip the switch and turning on uh, 77, I believe, 77 kilowatts of, of solar panels. Uh, it is one of their locations. It's the third one that they've installed solar panels on. And now as an organization, they're up to over 90% solar energy or close to 90% uh, alternative energy source. So for me, that's, uh, that's very exciting. Dennis, um, I'm going to give it back to you now and uh, give you an opportunity to share a little bit more about what you know. Well, we're, we're back inside. I'm ready. I'm sure they're uh, shaking hands and congratulating each other. Uh, so we're just waiting for some of the team members to come back in for the roundtable discussion. But, um, yeah, I mean, 77 watt, that's, that's a good size installation. And, you know, these guys on three of their eight locations are at 90% on two of them and 72% on the first one. And the first one is four and a half acres of solar panels. I mean, really, these guys are taking this seriously. I, I heard uh, Dr. Laura Nelson say that uh, they've spent over $2 million invested. Let's, let's make that clear. Invested over $2 million and they're expecting a five-year payback on that money with okay. a system that's going to last 25 to 30 years. This is a great investment in the future of their business. It's going to pay dividends. So you're talking about the, the, the figures you just gave me were for Burton Lumber. Burton Lumber, all three locations. Yeah. To date, money invested is over $2 million, north of $2 million. And the payback okay. for that entire system is expected to be five years or less. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, the reason I'm asking you uh, this question is uh, we had a couple of questions come in from the audience. Um, and one of the questions was, what's the return on the investment, the three to five years? Or, you know, is this even considered 
considered or is it a concern? Um, and maybe this is just more of an environmental project and we're not so concerned about the investment side of it. So that's maybe some questions we will get to um, and maybe can ask Jeff, but uh, yeah. I, you just answered the five-year return on investment portion. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, we did. Oh, I just noticed I need to move something else here so that uh, this roundtable discussion will work right. They okay. got to have this mic over there. So while you're doing that, uh, I think it would also be a good opportunity for us to throw in, if, if the audience is just now joining, uh, it would be a real good opportunity for us to throw in some footage from the drone, the aerial footage, that. to show us you know, what this latent location looks like, because that's what where we're at. That's where the aerial footage was shot uh, earlier this weekend or last weekend. And um, uh, as you're getting everything organized there, I think it would be a great opportunity to do that. Uh, well, but there you go. The footage is, is up now. Um, yeah, this was shot a little over a, a week ago, actually. I just did the editing on it uh, this weekend. I didn't shoot this footage. I wish I could be, uh, you know, able to say that I did, but it's just fantastic footage of the installation. We were just out in the same yard um, only moments ago, and, uh, of course, from the ground, you can't see these solar panels from anywhere because the, um, the building that they're on is so tall that you just don't see them. But with this aerial footage, you get an idea. And here, I love this shot. This is our Wasatch front. This is, that's where all the skiing in Utah happens. So yeah, that's what we're famous for is those mountains. Yeah, well that's, now Utah's famous for more than just the mountains. It seems like uh, maybe we're, Utah is really carving out a, a niche for itself in the solar industry as well. And um, we're trying really hard. Um, you know, we, we would like to be thought of as leaders. We're never going to be the largest, so we might as well be the first, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that's a place to start. You know, uh, uh, I'm, I'm very interested. I know the, the audience is, we still have people checking in to this event and watching, awesome. uh, watching it live. Um, we, we have a question. I think it, it, it would be fun to bring this up, but... Uh, uh, Eric says, I wonder how the employees feel, um, uh, you know, about all the business improvements and, you know, all the efficiencies are great, but are the employees making a living, so to speak? And Oh, yeah, well, that's a great question for Jeff. I think Jeff's going to be busy talking when we uh, finally go live with this roundtable, it sounds like. Yeah, so I think it's a great question for Jeff, uh, but it's one that's, that's coming up. And uh, if you have more questions, please... Uh, ask them and use the hashtag s or uh, use the hashtag aw4c live. Uh, we will get to them as soon as we can. Uh, Dennis, in the meantime, it looks like uh, we are we have a table set up and um, uh, we're getting some some individuals here who can speak to us uh, about this. Perfect. You know, I have to say, I, I'm a big fan of, of the way they've stamped Burton Lumber on, on all of the, the OSB board around. It just looks so cool, but, you know, I think it's... It does look really, really great. Let's make sure it shows up in the shot, too. There we go. There we go. That's a, that's a, a great shot. Uh, it looks... You know, and, and I, can anybody hear me? Uh, are we on speaker now so that they can hear? Or are you going to be relaying this information to them? Uh, I brought a microphone. I'm just not sure where I put it, or a speaker. I can try putting it on the computer speakers, and we'll see if they can hear the computer speakers uh, as soon as they're ready to go here. Yeah, okay, no no big deal. Uh, in the yeah, meantime, really. yeah, in the meantime, while you're getting that set up, if you could roll the, the tape, uh, we'll use that to fill in. Okay. <laughs> Are you guys all ready? Sure. All right. Well, let's stop rolling that tape then. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try and see if these guys can hear. We're going to switch from my mic, so you won't hear me very well. I'll start shouting here in a second. Okay. All right. Can, uh, can you all hear me? Do we have a two-way communication? That's where you 
You won't be heard, buddy. Huh? I'll be okay. Go ahead and say that again. Okay, can you all hear me? Do we have two-way communication now with yeah. with the crew? Okay, great. Uh, you know, I said I made a I made a comment uh, as Dennis was walking back after flipping the switch that we have one electrifying uh, mayor on scene today. So, but that's <laughs> exciting. You know, it's 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 neat to be a part of this. Um, you know, World for Change TV really is looking for organizations that we can promote and we can help uh, uh, people like the audience members to know where to go and and who to support with their money. And it's exciting to see a family-owned and operated organization like yours, Jeff, uh, that's taking strides in the right direction. And it's really, I, I know you're securing a position in the marketplace. We have a few questions from the audience um, today, but uh, let's just start and start to go down them. Uh, one of them is orientation of the panels. Are they facing south? I don't see any tracking uh, involved with these panels, so that might be a question for uh, for Hunt Electric. You know, real quick before we start, I was going to have everybody introduce themselves one more time so okay. people know who they are. Yeah. So I'd love to do that. So when people are answering the questions, then people will know who they are. So um, okay. if we'll start at the end with Brock, and we'll move down. They'll introduce themselves, and then we'll start taking those questions. Okay. Um, Brock Thane with Hunt Electric. Jeff Burton of Burton Lumber. I'm Bob Stevenson, Mayor of Layton City. Kent Anderson, Layton City Economic Development. Norman Harrison, here representing the Utah Solar Association. Okay, great. Uh, that's that's incredible. Thank you all for being uh, being here and for taking some questions live from the audience. Uh, Again, Eric from Double Dog Farm, he's located up there in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, he asked about orientation on the panel, so I, th I think that would be a, a good question to, to ask uh, the electric folks. Yeah, so uh, on the orientation of the solar panels, uh, typical rule of thumb is you want to face them south and you want to face them at an angle of latitude. Um, you know, that, that comes into effect with what your goals are with the with the design if if you want maximum power output you you focus in on latitude and and 180 south um, that being said um, there's a lot of other design characteristics that come into play with with specifically these systems um, headquarters was faced uh, due south and on a 15 degree angle um, Layton and Linden both faced faced a little more towards the east um, and one was because of structure, um, two was because of the design characteristics and trying to minimize the impacts on the demand characteristics. Okay. It would have been difficult because of the building being north and south the way it is here, it would have been difficult to have pitched those. You would have gotten a lot less solar panels in the same space. Is that not correct? That is, that is correct. So that's, that's what we'll look at is when you have, when you have your, when you angle your modules, you have some inner row shading issues that you want to address. Um, shade is a killer of, a, of the solar panels production, so um, you know all those things were taken into consideration to give them the max output and the most bang for their buck for their orientation. Okay, well that's that's good to know, um, and, and you know I, I think. Uh, well, I, I just really like to see this kind of interaction. Jeff, I got a question for you, and w one of the audience members said, you know, maybe uh, Jeff won't want to answer this, but uh, his question really was about the employees. You know, how do the employees feel working for an organization like um, like yours who is taking, you know, who, who's really taking strides and steps in the right direction? And, uh, you know, maybe they don't have a positive feeling towards something like this, uh, because maybe it doesn't really affect the employees. Uh, how would you answer that as a business owner? And uh, where where can where can we move ahead as a society and other small business owners? You know, how can they view this? Uh, I can only guess, but I, I, I guess when we did our Salt Lake array, there were a number of our employees that were grateful to the ownership for doing uh, what we'd done. To show that we were a uh, a company that wanted to show sustainability in offsetting our power bill, 
as owners of the company, I can tell you that we we looked at it very long and hard to make sure that it made financial sense. And so I guess in both regards, uh, I, I would believe not speaking in behalf of our employees, but I, I heard enough from them that they they were grateful that we could see that we wanted to be a part of energy savings. Lumber yards are notorious for being uh, touted as guys that want to kind of tear down the economy. You know, we're cutting a lot of trees. Uh, and if we can give something back, that was a big deal for us. Well, I hope that answered like your question. Yeah, well, that, that's great. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. And it sounds like you're doing more than, uh, than just cutting down trees. You're saving um, all of the ends of the truss cutoffs and you're reusing a lot of materials. So your energy savings just, it's not all about um, the kinds of light bulbs you're using in your store. It's, it's about every piece of, of your organization. And uh, I, I'm, I'm inspired by that. Tell us a little more about that from uh, the big overall perspective. Well, we, we collect sawdust from, uh, from our saws that are in our uh, architectural door plant. Uh, we take all of the waste that comes from a, a truss plant and we finger, jo finger joint it. Uh, we, we take cardboard. We recycle our paper. Uh, you know, those kind of things that, uh, that Brock talked about. We looked at light bulbs. We looked at, I guess, the first half, the, the, the lower hanging fruit that made sense initially than having to go to these larger expense. So uh, we've even got our trucks that carry a lot of this lumber around as, as energy efficient as they can. When these big uh, trucks, we, we, use, uh, we use natural gas on a bunch of them, on our forklifts are naturally gas. So uh, it, is a, it is in the forefront of not only the ownership but the management of, of Burton Lumber to try to make uh, energy and economic sense. Yeah. Well, that's it's good. Uh, you know, the, the more businesses that we have doing this, the better we're going to be as a society and I think as uh, the overall picture of humanity um, in this world that we live in. So, you know, uh, I'd like to get to the mayor uh, briefly. You know, from we don't have a, a question for you, Mr. Mayor, but one question I do have is, is help us understand your perspective from an economic development uh, in a in a small town or a growing town like your like yourself. Um, how does your office look at this, and how are you inspiring other small business owners and small businesses and even large organizations to do the same thing? Well. I think we all realize that in in any town, part of the growth that you need is also your business side, uh, and that business is just not commercial, but it's also job-based uh, specialties that can come in. Uh, that becomes the the long-term lifeblood of what you need in a community. When these businesses come in, one of the things that they definitely are looking for is the efficiency that you have within your community, and also the efficiency that they can have within their own organization. In the business world, things have become very, very competitive, and as we see the technology advance, these uh, businesses, you know, throughout the world are, are trying to find every which way they can to basically save because as they save they're able to in a sense make more or their profit uh, uh, is, is enhanced which is good for shareholders, employees, the whole works. And so Leighton City has always taken the stand that we do want to be on the cutting edge. One of the things that we're in the process right now is dealing with this fiber network that we're trying to get in place uh, within the community as far as the internet goes. Most uh, businesses now depend upon the internet, and the fiber is very important. I think that what Burton is doing here with the solar panels is the community, because as one good story can be told, it leads to other people saying, "I want to do that." And uh, you know, I take my hat off, hat off to Burton for stepping up and doing this, and. We will be using them as an example, and I know Jeff is committed to sharing their experience and being able to explain to others how well this has worked. And we see this as being something that not only we as the city, but we want the businesses to get behind this also. Yeah. I think to, if I can add a little bit to that too, 
is uh, something that Leighton City feels that we really exemplify as prosperity and diversity. And so we have a lot of diversity in businesses, but I think Burton has really taken this to heart in diversifying. Now I heard natural gas, you hear solar power. These are the types of diversity that we're looking forward to because it's going to result in prosperity for the business, helping their bottom line, helping them to succeed, and helping them to continue to thrive in our community. So I believe that the Burton's really done a good job of really capturing diversity in order to influence their prosperity. Yeah, very. Yeah, that's very interesting. And uh, clearly, you you're looking to be progressive um, as a region and there in the town. So I commend you um, and your office there. So thank you for that. I do have a question for Norman. Uh, now, this is something I thought when we when I was helping to produce the first uh, series or first episode earlier today, um, I got to thinking a little bit, you know, if there's going to be, if Rocky Mountain Power and, and an organization like yours, Norm, will be working to, uh, to drive funds to some of these business owners, you know, what kind of attachment might come with that uh, funding. So, for example, uh, a lot of times, if, if you know a state's going to get money from the government, there's going to be an attachment to that. Um, how does that work when it comes to these uh, solar initiatives? And uh, help us understand that, at least as a consumer. Well, let me let me try and understand the question. So, you're asking, um, you know, as a solar association, what we're doing to help. Rocky Mountain Power or other organizations that are helping fund these projects? Is that what the question is? Yes. Uh, so how, first of all, uh, about the money. So we have uh, a large portion of funds that, that can go towards a project like this. It uh, was talked about a little bit earlier. And then second of all is what's your position in that process? Uh, maybe it's not. Um, but help the consumer understand it so they can put some pieces together in their mind. Um, again. Yeah, we have a, a very good utility um, company here with Rocky Mountain Power Pacific Core, and they are they've been very progressive in in offering um, solar uh, incentives in forms of rebates. Um, as a solar association, obviously we work closely with organizations like Pacific Core in encouraging this kind of. Um, benefit at least right now um, as the industry is continuing to just in, it, in its infancy grow um, as well as uh, we work um, on the legislative side encouraging our uh, our uh, people at the state level to um, work with um, all of us in pushing forward um, legislation that will benefit and help um, companies like Burton Lumber to benefit from this financially both on the tax side and and things like that so um, the association um, was started again with just a small group of us there's lots of members now and, and we have a lot bigger voice to be able to affect some of those uh, changes that help the industry and help people that would like to do renewable energy to, to do so Okay. All right. Good. Um, again, like I said, we have a lot of questions that are coming in from the audience. Uh, the next question on the list is, um, in a large system, this is back to a technical question, uh, in a large system, is, is there a monitor that tells you that one of the panels might be failing um, or failed? And if so, does it pinpoint the panel or do you have to go you know, pick out the panel just because you notice a wattage loss? Yes. Yeah, so. Um it is strictly dependent on the type of monitoring and the type of inverters that you use. And um, to answer your question, yes, there in large systems, it's it's usually more down to a string level. So a string is a group of modules connected into series. Mm -hmm. um, so it's usually down to that level is where you'll get into. Um, but that being said, there are monitoring devices out there that if you know if it, if it makes economic sense to monitor at that level, you could get down to that that module level um, in this situation we're, we're down to the string level. Sure. Very good. Well that's uh, all the questions that we have from the audience. I really appreciate um, you all taking the time to sit down and do this with us and um, for the audience. So uh, I'll leave it up to you on, on that end uh, how you want to close this out. 
Yeah, so Wayne, uh, one thing before we do close out, I was just handed a cop copy <laughs> of some of the points that, that Jeff's talking points. Um, and some of these are really impressive. Jeff, do you want to take a chance? And the thing is, as I look through this document, Jeff, it, it feels like for our consumers that are watching, these are going to create some reality tips so that they're going to really grasp the enormity of what Burton is doing. Well, I think I touched on on most of these as far as terms, Jeff, as far as the talking points. Yeah, it's the that because impressive. for me as a as a person, it doesn't you know mean anything until I can equate it to something that I understand. I'm not. I know what I'm you're talking, asking about <laughs> is we recycle one point two one and a half tons for every eight to ten weeks. Okay. We, we and, and part of our new computer system, we're trying to go paperless. So we're actually trying to you know, ch even change that. I know well, our paper producer can like that. Here. Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> plans and money. Five tons of cardboard per year. Five tons of cardboard per year. We installed some commercial doors so that the sensors, they would close. We wouldn't get uh, the, the heat escape in this large building we've got at our Salt Lake branch. I talked about the uh, sawdust collectors that we uh, we used. We even sell it to pellets and we, well we sell it to pellet stoves uh, companies so that they can you know mash them down and sell them off. Uh, upgraded lighting you know we tried to like I said that low-hanging fruit we really tried to make sure that the uh, the lighting systems were as efficient as possible. Uh, we found that we had probably more lights turned on at night for security than we needed to. Uh, I think that probably covers most of what uh, is on this Perfect. sheet. So we really appreciate it, um, Wayne. I'm going to go ahead and play that closing video that we played this morning, and uh, we'll call this an event. All right, good. Thank you all for being here, and uh, thank you for participating in A World for Change in our broadcast today. Burden Lumber, helping build Utah for more than 100 years.